And we welcome you to the head coach Landon Bussey program here on the Braves Sports Network on the radio 91.7 WPRL and WPRL.org. And we are on Facebook Live. We are at the Whitney Arena, and it's going to be fun this Saturday and Monday. Do you know the last time we've had a basketball game on this floor as far as the men are concerned? I did the math. 63 days the last time we played here. That was Xavier, Louisiana, crisscrossing the country. 63 days the last time we played on this floor. And now we have an opportunity with Texas Southern rolling in here and Johnny Jones and P.J. Henry and company, although P.J. Henry hasn't played a lot here the last couple of games. We'll talk about Texas Southern. We'll talk about Prairie View. But, of course, we'll start with Alabama State and Alabama A&M. And we start in Huntsville as we'll recap those games and we'll preview the Texas trip coming up. I'm Charles Edmond. Glad you can join us. Head coach Landon Bussey, Cedric Tillman. You don't see him, but uh, Cedric Tillman, our producer for the Landon Bussey program. Coming up next, we'll have the Nate Kilbert program. Assistant coach Lisa Powell will pinch hit for Nate Kilbert here on this evening. Hope you're safe out there. It's just been brutal weather-wise was worried about my trek here on campus. I got to give the road crews all over this area credit for clearing the roads and uh, a pretty good drive here on campus. But in other parts of the state, especially in North Mississippi, they're going to get another round of bad weather on Thursday. So be safe. Be weather aware. Be weather conscious. It's cold out there. Landon Bussey, I don't like the cold weather, but it is what it is as we bring you in here. Uh, you're from Baltimore, so you this is this is nothing for you. <laughs> I mean, it's cold. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I'm used to it, you know, like the ice and the snow. That you know, that right there isn't nothing compared to what I'm used to. But it's definitely cold out there. Well, one of the things that you're not used to is being one in two through three games in conference, and that's kind of what where we are right now. So let's let's talk about going and continuing this road odyssey. The Jackson State game, we talked about that giving up the most points in a regular season conference game since the COVID year. Low scoring game against Alabama State. We start in Huntsville and a pretty good game there. 2-1 possession games uh, Landon Bussey on the Alabama swing. We won one by possession and we lost the other day against Alabama State by possession. Talk about the Alabama trip overall. Um, it was a great atmosphere in both environments. Um, was very excited how our team got out there and competed. Um, on both games. Unfortunately, we was able to split. We like to get both of them, but, you know, we got to take it, and now we just got to come home and protect home court. Protecting home court is the key, and we're going to recap the action here. You can text a question, 601-301-2611. You can tweet a question, Tall Man Radio. Talk a little bit about Braves basketball as we come home to take on Texas Southern and Prairie View. Uh, we've got a couple of our tough trips. we got the Florida trip coming up, and we're done with Alabama. we got the Texas trip coming. So the, the schedule will flip, obviously. We'll have more home games and road games on the weekend. But on the road, Coach, taking on Alabama State and Alabama A&M. First with Alabama A&M. Talk a little bit about the uh, Bulldogs and the challenge that they pose as you looked at the scout. Well, just their experience um, on them guys been there for four years now, maybe five years, and Tucker and uh, Smith and Williams and them guys, you know, having continuity, um, playing with each other for a while now. And just, you know, how well coached they are, how tough they were. Um, they did a great job of getting downhill. They did a great job of making open shots. So um, it was just overall concerns just about, um, you know, just the environment. Of course, we're going to have highlights for those that are watching. We'll have highlights of both games, and I want to thank uh, Alabama A&M, uh, Brian Howard and the Alabama A&M Bulldog uh, Nation there for giving us the access, as well as Alabama State and Dr. Jason Cable, as well as Travis Jerome of the Athletic Media Relations Office. So these highlights are courtesy Alabama State and Alabama A&M, so we'll have highlights of it for those that are watching. So you look at the lineup, Coach, with Smith, Downey, Peak, Cameron Tucker, and E.J. Williams. E.J. Williams, about 6'10", about 270. Man, he was a man inside and not fast but wide. I thought that would be a, be an issue. What was the, the biggest thing when you're talking about Alabama and m the team that can get up and down the floor, a team that can shoot, trying to dump it inside? Well, with a guy like E.J. Williams, we you know we emphasized help side defense. It's thrown over the top. We need to have a defender right there to help our um, primary defender. So that was the biggest things right there. And then limiting, limiting the team to one shot. 
I think we did an unbelievable job. One thing that really, we're doing a great job of right now is crashing offensive glass. I think we had 20 offensive rebounds that game. Had 18 offensive rebounds against Jackson State. Had 15 offensive rebounds against Alabama State. So that's one thing right there that's really saving us right now is our ability to offensive rebound. Oh, for those looking at the Alabama State highlight that we played them second. Oh, Alabama A&M, obviously we started with them. Um, so when you look at Smith and Downey, I mean, those two were really, really big in terms of knocking down shots. It was back and forth. We got off to a good start. They hung tough, and it was a 37-33 game at the break. Talk about the first 20 minutes in which we led by four. Well, um, I think the first 20 minutes was us just really getting back to our defense that we want to play, get up pressure, want to try to deny the wings a little bit, want to make it tough for our offensive teams to run their offense. So um, I think we did a great job. Did a great job being up four um, in the first half against Alabama A&M, and then we did a better job coming out of halftime. Yeah, we came out at, at after halftime. We led by as many as seven, and then they came back, Coach, and took a five-point lead. Just like that, we came back and tied the game up, and it came down to the final to the final couple of possessions. The way the game was going back and forth, as uh, we look at some of the highlights here, back and forth we go, 26-24. It was one of those games, Coach, you had a, a lot of lead changes. Uh, we had two lead changes, just back and forth. In, in that game, um, I, I thought we did a nice job overall with the poise factor. And I look at the game, the way it unfolded, it kind of reminded me of a lot of the one-possession games we had last year. We can reel them all off. Florida trip uh, that we got coming up, the Florida team's one-possession, Texas Southern, Prairie View, so many one-possession games last year. And I thought the poise we played with after being up seven twice and then being down five, how we were able to respond quickly and with a minute and a half left, really making some gritty plays defensively and then went on that mini run, a 30-second run in the last minute and a half. Yeah, we made some some championship plays um, within the last few minutes of that game. Um, just big time, 50-50 balls. We got steals, being in the passing lane, offensive rebounding, just championship plays all over. So that's what we want to continue to just build off of. You know, trying to get championship plays, trying to win 50-50 balls, and just trying to find a way to, you know, be on the right side of the scoreboard. In the last minute and a half, it was tied at 65, and it was a goal 10 call that gave us the lead. It was overturned in the final, you know, final minute or so of that game. Talk about that because we had the lead. They took a look at it. It was overturned. As we look at the highlights here, with four, with uh, a minute 40 left, here we go. A 65 all. Just, let's talk about the sequence, Coach. Just get hard. Yeah, but the right, right after that, they called a goal ten, and we scored right after that. So it, it it really didn't hurt us. I think it was a good defensive possession. The referees made a good call, um, but we came back and scored right there that same possession because it was still our ball. But one thing that we got to do a better job of, and what really hurt us against Alabama State, um, was just us not doing a good job of closing the game out. You look at Byron Joshua and getting the ball inside, and that capped off a 6-0 run. So it was tied at 65. And then uh, Alabama a and made a couple of plays, a couple of shots to kind of keep the game close. Talk about the key for us closing out that game. you talking about Alabama State or a and I'm sorry, Alabama A&M. Um, the, key, the key was defense, um, just defense. You know, you know they, they wasn't going to let you walk out that easily. They hit, a, they hit a two threes, you know, late. But I'm like, I'm just ready to get out of here with the victory. <laughs> but they wasn't going to let you walk out of there easy. So, you know, they, they made some big-time shots late. But it was our defense that we really keyed into as far as us getting stops and, and closing the game out, you know. One thing I'm preaching to my team right now is I, I need to find about five, six closers. Closers. Like, you know how the pitchers, you got closers for pitchers. I need five closers that can go in there and box out Beauty they supposed to be in the help side defense. Guard their yard, then finish with a box out and rebound down and us getting a stop. Then on the other end, making wide open shots. Yeah. Close the game. You know, close it. You know. You know, guys gotta step up. Guys gotta step up to the plate and, and learn how to close out games. I, I thought that unit that was on the floor in the last minute and a half when we went on that six oh run, when you say that, I thought that might have been the, the, the closing group. You know, Joshua got a steal. Joshua with a layup and an assist uh, coming up with big-time stops. I thought that group, do you think that group that we had on the floor the last minute and a half was, was, was your closer? What, what, happened, what happened Saturday? 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, what happened? I mean, you say they closed. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I I'm, I'm I'm looking at the, the Alabama. You looking at one game? Yeah. I, I'm I at want it, I want everything. I want both games. I don't want just one. You know. So I mean, I, I don't know. No, I don't know. But I'm gonna find me guys that can close the game out the right way. That's gonna buy into what I needed to do, especially the last three four minutes of the game, when that's that's where your money is. That's that's when you win basketball games. Who is the most well coached and well disciplined team, you know. If if you can limit team to one shot, limit your turnovers, and make layups and free throws, you will win the game. If you, if you can do those things and, and and you and you give up, and you give up less offense rebounds than the other team, you don't turn the ball over as much as the other team, and you don't miss as many free throws and layups as the other team in the last four or five minutes. Of the game. It's a close game. You gonna win that game. Well, when you talk about turnovers, we had 13 turnovers. We were 14 of 21 from the free throw line against Alabama A&M. So talk about that aspect of it, free throws and limiting the turnovers. They had 15. We had 13. Were you happy with the way we were able to protect the ball somewhat? No, I don't think we did a good job. And that's one thing we're trying to clean up in practice right now. We just turned the ball over at a very high rate. Turn the ball over. You know, right now we should be – how many shot attempts did we shoot? How many we times? had 62 attempts against A&M. And how many did they shoot? 54. You know, right now, we, we should be shooting 12 to 15 more shot attempts than any other team right now just due to our ability to um, crash off as a glass. Um, I think that's one thing that we have done an unbelievable job of is creating second-chance opportunities. Now, we got to convert them opportunities, um, but we cannot – get off his rebound then turn it over you know that cancels out so we just got to continue to crash the glass got to continue to emphasize the crash the glass crash the glass cl crash the glass but that right there just you know because right now we lead the conference in and once you know for these past three games we lead the conference in offense rebound we averaging about 18 offense rebounds a game which is really good but that means that we should get more shot attempts if we get more shot attempts i mean we need to make more shots we make more shots i mean we get more points we get more points we get more wins we get more wins everybody happy yeah <laughs> yeah. So, so, so typically, when things are purring along offensively, how many shot attempts would you say is optimal for this for this team when those other things are in place? Well, I think it, it all depends on the pace of the game. It all depends on the pace of the game. It all depends, you know, how the referees are calling the game. But I do believe that you know we should not have any more than eighteen offense rebounds a game. You know, we should be clear over eighteen offense rebounds every single game. Just with our ability, you know, the guys that we have, and I, you know, and that's one thing that, you know, I wanted to clean up from past years that, you know, I always got my butt kicked on the glass in conference. Got my butt kicked. So that, that's one area I wanted to clean up. Now, there's other areas that, I, you know, I should have been focused on as well, too. But our ability to crash the offensive glass right now is, is, is very impressive. Now, we just got to keep it up. And I got to get one more. I got to get a third rebounder. Because, you know, I think J.K. had probably about eight offense rebounds. Yep. Um, Mike had probably about, what, five offense rebounds? Mm -hmm, yep. And now I need two more guys down there to go get four offense rebounds a game. You know, I would like to be at least 22, 21. That will be good. But 18 right there is, is a good number. The Braves got the win over Alabama A&M. Coach, talk about that final possession. I mean, it came down to that. We got to stop there. What did you expect uh, from A&M on that final possession way to get that stop? Well, I, t I talked to the team and said, you know, it's going to be a play designed to go to either corners. So make sure we cover the corner and make sure they pass the ball out. Anytime it's uh, with that much time left in the game, three seconds, and the baseline out of bounds, it's something that's going to be drawn up. Now, I thought it was going to be drawn up to the opposite corner, some type of baseline drift. Or something's going towards that corner. I mean, where, where else are you going to pass the ball to? The top of the key? Where else are you going to pass the ball to? The opposite wing? You know, it's the back ball right there. You can't pass right there. So it's something that's going to go on to the corner. And we said, we talked about it. Cover the corners. Cover the corners. Cover the corners. Let's make sure we switch all screens and just cover the corners. And what do we do? Not cover the corner. So, you know, we just got to keep on practicing. got to keep on practicing. You know, we just got to. I got to do a better job of putting them in, you know, game situation and practice. You got to keep practicing it and drilling 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 it. And before you know it, um, you know, we'll, we'll turn the corner and head in the right direction. Just got to keep drilling. 
Braves win that first game on the Alabama swing, 74 to 71. They were led by Jeremiah Kendall, coach 15 and 13. That's just kind of expected from him. 15 and 13. Three players in double figures, Byron Joshua with 12, Jeremiah Gamble with, with 10. I thought he got it going a little bit from beyond the arc. Uh, talk about your bench, Coach, because you've talked about this in non-conference, how you're playing a lot of guys in non-conference, but the bench shrinks when you get into these type of games. Are you in that mode now where the bench has shrunk or you still feel like you can you can play everyone and, and mix and match? Well, right now it's, it's shuffling the cards and trying to find – What's your best lineup? I'm trying to figure out who can make plays, who can help this team win basketball games. So, I mean, you know, going to try to change a few things up, you know, change rotation up a little bit to try to see if, you know, you can put other guys, give other guys opportunity to see if they can go win basketball games. I mean, that's the nature of the business is, you know, finding Jims and Joes and go win you basketball games. So that's, you know, it's my job to make adjustments and put the team in the best situation to be successful. And with, with that being said, there's some adjustments that I need to make to try to, you know, mix up this rotation to try to see, you know, who can go out here and make plays. You know, let's roll the balls out. Let's now go out here and win the basketball game. So, Well, in the backcourt, Byron Joshua, you have him on the floor. But then you got a freshman in Gaines, Wyatt, who had nine points against Alabama A&M. Stoudemire had a big block that was huge in a one-possession game. We can look back at that, but I'm impressed with the poise of, of games. Wyatt, you're, you're leaving him in in critical times in games, a freshman running the show a little bit. Talk about his growth and development as a freshman. He, he, he's doing a great job. You know, he's doing a great job. His ability to get to the paint, the ability to get to the basket. Um, he does an unbelievable job of finding his teammates and things like that. Um, now he just got to stay consistent. Well, the Braves coming off a huge win over Alabama and m Then they head to Montgomery to take on Alabama State. So let's look at that. Alabama State with uh, T.J. Madlock, Isaiah Range, who had big threes in the game, uh, with Yubong, Octave, and Hines. What was the challenge dealing with that? We, we didn't do a great job of um, – Finish them with a the box out. They had way too many offensive rebounds in the last four or five minutes of the game. Um, and those offensive rebounds led to second chance points. And then we did not make shots on the other end. You know, a few things that, you know, I, I look back, changes I could have made, you know, probably shouldn't have had uh, JK in the game in that first half because that's when he got his third foul in the first half. And then I couldn't star him the second half. Then we came out slow. And then I also look back at it, you know, I'm not sure why I did not save a timeout. For, you know, the last eight minutes, I mean, the last eight seconds. But, you know, it's just adjustments that, you know, you know, we all got to get better. You know, we all have to get better as a coaching staff to the players that, you know, f figure out a way to, you know, come up with a victory Saturday. Yeah, we're looking at the highlights there. We, we led by 10, and at one point we led by as many as 12 in the second half. Uh, was it when Kendall got in foul trouble, did that kind of stem the tide and turn the tide in their favor? Because I thought we were doing a nice job inside, and then he got in foul trouble, and then you have to kind of play that offense-defense game trying to protect him. Yeah, I mean, just trying to just trying to figure out a way to get him on the court and, and still so our offense can be fluent. Um, you know, we held him to 20 points in the first half, which, you know, I was proud about that, but then we, we're struggling scoring. And so now, okay, you come back out, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game. Should, should you play J.K., start him, and then risk him pick, picking up an early foul? Or let's go in a different direction and say, see if someone else can step up. And he could, they still, we still have the same impact inside to where we could push this lead up to 15, 17, 18. And so it's, a, it's just, a, you know. It's something that you go back and forth with, you know, as far as decisions and things like that. But I do think we end up getting up 12. Mm -hmm. And then I do remember after we got up 12, they shot the ball. And they got a 50-50 ball. And they passed out the range three. And that, that's that's the last possession I remember. And that was like what, 13 minutes to go in the half. Yeah, and the range got going. I think he had three threes in critical moments you know, to kind of keep them in it. And there were two or three 50-50 balls that we just didn't get range. They found them open. And then I thought that that kept them on pace. As you see a block for those that are watching it, 
uh, you know, defensively, holding a team to 55 points. If you had told me two weeks ago, you know what, we're going to hold Alabama State to 55 points, and I would take that in a heartbeat, but I didn't think we would only score 53. And I had to go back again, you know, to see when the last time that we lost a game only scoring that many, just giving up just 55 points. It was prior to you coming on board, but it's kind of a, a strange game. You, you like the defense, obviously giving up because you talked about 57 or less. That goal was accomplished, but only 53 against Alabama State. Yeah, I mean, I say I think our defense was really good compared to um, when we played um, in Jackson. It was really good. Um, we did a great job of you know, getting in the gap, did a great job of, you know, really disrupting the offense. We didn't do a great job of finishing with a box out, um, but we just did a great job, Re really, really good job. And uh, we did a great job of transition defense as well. You know, we just got to, we just got to, you know, close out games. It's that simple. We got to do a better job as far as just, you know, closing out the game. When you look at the game, 19 for Jeremiah Kendall, despite the fouls, Gambrel with 14, Byron Joshua with 10. Uh, I thought we were in really good shape late in the first half when Willie Anderson hit a three in the corner with about six seconds left. I think that put us up nine. We were scrambling, and Anderson hit a three in the corner to put us up nine. I thought additional scoring there, and I thought I thought we could be well on our way. When, when you get something like that on the road, that kind of tells you, you know what, it might be our night. And, you know, talk about Anderson getting, getting him some playing time and knocking down a big shot there. Um, he came in huge. That was a big three that he just hit. Um, but prior to that, he just gave up a big three right down here on the other end. Um, so he came back down and hit a big three to make up for it. But, you know, you know, just trying to get him to really focus on defending the rebound and, and offense will come to him. But that shot that he made was huge for us going into halftime. We had a double-figure lead. And then, Coach, talk about the final possession of getting Byron Joshua the shot. Talk about that final possession down two. Yeah, I mean, we, we really wanted him to drive the ball. Um, you know, I, I don't think that he w was aware of how much time he had. He had about three seconds. But we really wanted him to drive the ball and get downhill and get a piece of the paint and try to get a layup to, you know, go to overtime. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, um, you know, he took the jump shot and he had a, he had a, a long defender on him. So he was able to block it right here. We trying to get him to go downhill. Oh, he had a wild layup. You know, so, you know, it's, like I said, it's a learning experience. Very seldom do you see Byron Joshua get a shot blocked like that. Yeah, I, I think I don't, I don't think that he was really aware of how much time was on the clock. Yeah. Well, tough loss for the Braves there, 55-53. to 53. So, Coach, now, you know, talk about the speech to your team. After the game, you know, you had a, a three on the road. We're done with that. And a tough loss in Montgomery, good win in, in Huntsville. And we come home one and two. Just talk about the work this week and the speech to your team this week as we finally come home for the first time in 63 days. You know, we just got to take one game at a time. Um, I think today in practice, it was, it was very competitive. Um, you know, trying to get these guys to just, you know, care a little more. Want these guys to care a little more. Want these guys' spirits as far as being a competitor. Um, to, to, to go to a different level, you know, trying to get these guys to really, you know, just work harder and care more and spend more time on mastering their craft, spend more time on investing in their own game. So that's the biggest things right now for these, you know, everybody just to care more, you know, everybody not to get accustomed and, 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 and think it's okay just to lose basketball games. Think so. We, we got the next one and, you know, got, got to have more a winning spirit and you know you don't want to get you know winning i'm um, losing embedded into your blood and, and and guys you know to to me seem like you know a lot of guys don't really care it's like oh, we, we lost it is what it is well no, i'm not i'm not going to submit to that i'm not going to buy into that i don't believe in it you know we got to find a way to win basketball games it's that simple it, it sounds like a, a rare speech coming from you i when you were talking with the team today, it kind of reminded me, is this a speech that you've had before? Like, it's just kind of the the common speech this time where you, you lose a couple of tough games and now you got to wake everybody up. You, you kind of took it to a different level. I mean, we are we lost the first game last year against Jackson and it got hot. Now we're one and two through three games, 15 games left, a lot of basketball left. 
But what you don't want to have happen is a situation where you start, you know, dropping some games and now you're fighting uphill, something that we haven't done uh, with the exception of your first year. So was this kind of the common speech or kind of a different type of speech? To me, it just seemed like a different tone and tenor coming from you. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what type of speech it is. It's just, you know, what's on my heart is that, you know, I, I don't think that we care. To me, it's just that, you know, we don't care as a unit, as a whole, you know, that our back up against the wall. And we're not doing a great job of fixing the problem. We're not doing a great job of, you know, everybody coming in to make adjustments and see, like, okay, boom, if I did this, where, 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 how can I be better the next game? So it's just, a, it's just a lack of care right now. It's a lack of care. And it's more so, you know, it's, it starts with you. It starts with me and then my coaches. And then it starts, goes to the seniors. Just a lack of care and think that you know, it's it's just a game and it's okay and and I I, I won't I won't I won't buy in and submit to that at all. It seems strange because these veterans, these seniors, as you talked about, have been there and done that and bought the t and bought the t-shirt. Has won regular season titles, been in the NIT, has been in the big spotlight. So you would think that that's a speech you shouldn't have to have at this point. No, it's definitely a speech that you shouldn't have to have, but it's, you know, with our record right now, it's a reflection of what I'm talking about. You know, we just, you know, right now we just don't care. You know, it's a lack of care. And it's my job to find guys who care more, who care about missing box out, who care about turning the ball over, who care about blowing defensive assignments, who care about, you know, not winning 50-50 balls and championship plays. You know, so that's the biggest thing. You know, if you got to find guys who care, and I will do that. I will find guys who care more. I will find guys who can, you know, get out there and figure out a way to close out games. Well, another opportunity coming up. First time in 63 days we return home as we take on Texas Southern. So let's look at the games coming up. Let's start with Texas Southern coach Colby Granger. We got uh, Kenny Hunter, uh, Jonathan uh, Clossy, Sissy, followed by Hayes and Carter. Uh, we know when we play Texas Southern, whether here or in Houston, it's intense, it's physical. We've been in their way. They've been in our way. And this is one of those games. Texas Southern is 2-2 two and two in conference. They very well could be, should be 4-0. and oh. They lost a double-digit lead against Southern. They lost a double-digit lead against UAPB at home. The two losses were to Southern on the road and UAPB at home. And so when you look at Texas Southern, what's the difference with this team as compared to the Johnny Jones teams that we've seen in the past? Um, I don't think it's no different. You know, I think that right now they, you know, it's a, it's kind of they got a lot of new guys, and I think that they're going to turn the corner sooner or later, just because they got they're a well coached team, um, they're a championship team, and they got a lot of experience on that team. And Granger and um, PJ and um, Farouk and all them dudes who've been there, won championships, understand how it works in the swag, understand that you know the environment that you go in each and every night. And they're going to find a way to win basketball games, you know. So I expect to, to see them again in the tournament. Yeah, this this team, when we play them, it just is intense. It's physical. I mean, just watching these two teams in the SWAC tournament, um, just how you're down on your in your stats. I mean, it's just some of the better SWAC games that we've seen over the last few years has been all corn in Texas Southern. So you understand, and I'm sure you're, you're pressing your guys. you got to raise your level. Because this this Texas Southern team last year started out 0-5 in conference. They just got in the tournament. And once they got in, they took advantage and won the thing last year. So this team coming in here, the intensity of this game, and this is kind of what you've been talking about in terms of raising your level of play, getting a stop, and just doing the extra things because that's what it's going to take against a very good team. Yeah. Um you got to raise your level of play. You got to raise your level of intensity. You got to raise your level of commitment to the game. You got to raise your level of focus. Um, everything has to go to a different level, especially when you're going against Texas Southern, but especially when you're back up against the wall. You know, the attention to detail, you know, your focus, got to, got you, it got to improve. You know, everything right now has to improve. Um, your preparation, your, you know, your practices, your film sessions. You know, we got to improve in every area, so. 
you're 100% right, especially going up against a team who won um, the Swag Tournament three years in a row. Your focus and your preparation and your intensity have to go to a different level if you plan on walking out of here with a victory. How speaking of here, the Whitney Arena, talk about the excitement of finally coming back home, the grind of non-conference. First time in 63 days we played on this floor. Just talk about getting off the road and and having to get back on track in the friendly confines of the Whitney Arena. I mean, it's great. It's great to be back home. Um, you know, we typically have been pretty silent on the road, not this year so, so hopefully we could be really um, good at home. So maybe this team right here is a is a home team. You know, in the past past two years, we haven't been good at home. You know, so I, I don't know. We're just trying to figure out ways to win a basketball game. So hopefully that we, we, we hopefully we're much better at home than we are on, on the road. What's the one key? that we have to do here at home on Saturday at 1 o'clock. By the way, it's a 1 o'clock tip-off for the women's game an hour earlier than the usual Saturday deal. It's 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So what's the one big thing, Coach, that we have to do to come out of here with a win on Saturday? Share the ball. Guys are selfish right now. Share the ball. You know, we want, we want to get at least 15-plus assists. Get off the ball. Don't let it stick. Share the ball. Share the ball. Share the ball. Share the ball. And let the ball, you know, our defense will be fine. But we got to share the ball. We got to share the ball. When we get off the rebounds, we got to convert. We got to convert. We're getting way too many offensive rebounds right now to not to not be converted. That's Braves head coach Landon Bussy. Big games coming up. Uh, Texas Southern, one and three. And then, of course, on Monday, Prairie View comes to town before we go to Florida. Coach, before we let you go, I know you're a big Ravens fan. Ravens and the Texans coming up. My Rams are, are done. I thought it was the Rams and Ravens in the Super Bowl. That's not going to happen, at least from my end of it. Uh, I know you're a big, big Ravens fan. Uh, what do you think about uh, Baltimore coming up? The Texans don't have a chance. <laughs> they don't have a chance. This, this game ought to be a joke. <laughs> oh, my God. So you'll look at so when, when I come to my post-game interview Saturday, just let me know, Ravens, they, they, they up 21 points right now. <laughs> okay. It's sure. about to be a joke. <laughs> this game about to be a joke. Now, they about to do something really, really bad to the Texans. Okay, well. Yeah, they, no, they, had, they had two weeks of rest. Yeah. Because they, you know, they rested against the Steelers because we they already clinched them in one season. They got the bye, so now you're getting back healthy. And now they, they, they about to, yeah, there's about something bad about to happen to the Texans. Well, we will pick up that conversation on Saturday, Coach. Let's let's go get them. Absolutely. That's the Land and Bussy program. We'll take a two-minute timeout right here. Lisa Powell pinch hitting for Nate Kilbert. She'll join us coming up next as the Nate Kilbert program is coming your way right after this timeout here on the Braves Sports Network.